Our next speaker is a close friend of Dr. Vijayan Apasami to deliver the first Professor Vijayan Apasami Memorial Lecture with the topic, I want to rob a bank and it's more than trauma, is Dr. Professor Chu Ming Turk of Singapore. He is a founding member of the Asian Collaboration of Trauma, a senior consultant in trauma surgery and a general surgeon. He obtained his fellowship in trauma at St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center, Minnesota, USA, 1996. His expertise includes trauma, acute care surgery, and head and neck surgery. He is a past chair of the National Trauma Committee in Singapore and tasked with improving the trauma system in Singapore. He is the previous head of surgery of the, and the director of the trauma section in Tan Tok Seng Singapore Hospital. He was interested in developing world medicine and was an avid speaker at conferences. He frequently visited our country, the Philippines, to give lectures uh, during our ATLS and the STC courses. He was interested uh, in his free time. He indulges in his real love. He is a classical pianist player and an avid collector of rare piano scores. He also toys with his computers and makes some of them unworkable along the way. He had his cerebral bleed in 2017 while setting up a trauma system in Cambodia, and he now spends most of his time teaching and sharing his knowledge of trauma online. I also had the privilege of being a student during my DSTC course in Singapore together with Dr. Vijayan Apisami. So let's now welcome Dr. Professor Chu Ming Turk of Singapore. But VJ say in India, I was going to rob a bank. What? Then he repeated again. In India, I was in a rock band. That was our relationship. We were partners in crime since 2000. Full of humor and fun, as you can see. Politically incorrect too. We were different, as different as black and white, night and day. But we had something in common, trauma and teaching. Two old horses needed a family. We listened to our inner voices and the Pope who said, go spread the word, propagate. We had to leave a legacy behind, no matter how insignificant. So there you have it, the trauma team with the two parents and the two aunties. But in the evening of March 2015, I received the news that VJ had collapsed in his hotel room in Chicago. I was in Singapore then, the next day, Karen Gold, my manager, and I left for Chicago to bring Vijayan back to Singapore. Vijayan had passed away in his hotel room in Chicago. I brought him back to Singapore. And I played this as part of my YouTube channel in memory of my friend and my partner in crime.
trauma was both our passion. We were both trauma surgeons. And trauma was about often bringing patients back from the brink of death. It was a very stressful profession. We often use unconventional and often humorous examples to illustrate our point. To fill a bathtub, you must plug the outlet as well as run the tap. So stop the bleeding as well as resuscitate. And old bathtubs were more difficult to manage than new spanking ones. Teaching was another one of our passions. BJ was the program director of the residency program. He trained people to be good surgeons. We use unconventional methods to teach. Even a woman's hemline was not exempt from our examples, the rise and fall of medical trends. We didn't want to keep everything to ourselves. Four of us started ACT with the express intent of ASEAN countries collaborating with each other to develop trauma in the region. This slowly grew to include many countries in Asia. Soon, Asia will have its own trauma group, just like other continents. This photo was taken at our first meeting in Bacalo, Philippines. In it, you see many familiar faces. Cheryl Kujeko and Ted Herbosa are flanking VJ. Other faces from the other ASEAN countries are also present. Of course, they look much younger then. Astronomy was a passion for him. It was such an esoteric hobby. He would stay up all night to watch the stars, to shoot at the stars with his telescope. I don't know how his family put up with him. This is the picture of the telescope that Vijayan had that he spent so much time with it. And here is a, an eclipse of the sun taken by Vijayan. I have personally not seen an eclipse of the sun before. He didn't care about eating. Food was just food to him. But he cared about photography. He had all this high-tech camera equipment that he would carry around with him. He was an avid nature photographer. And it is these passions that make us human and help us to survive in a stressful environment just like in trauma. I have a violinist to share my passion for music. My violinist who knows Vijay and I would like to dedicate this snippet to Vijayan.
Hi everyone, this is from all of us in the Tangxing Pharma Service. Prof V has been very instrumental and has been a key pillar in the setup of um, the trauma service, both in Tangxing uh, and in Singapore. I first met Professor Vijayan uh, many years ago when I interviewed with him to get into the uh, National Healthcare Group uh, Residency Program. Prior to his unfortunate demise, Prof V was also the president-elect of the College of Surgeons of Singapore in 2015. Prof V was forwarding the Asian um, trauma perspective to the world. Prof V always believed that Asia had so much more to share in terms of trauma care. I know that he wanted to champion surgical education beyond medical school and surgical residency. And he made it his life uh, mission to not only train surgeons in Singapore, but also in Asia and around the world. Mr. Vijayan was my teacher when I was training to be a surgeon. His passion to teach and impart knowledge in real time. Prof V used to bring a Fuchsia pink camera and he will use this camera to take pictures of uh, traumatic injuries or any interesting signs that he sees so that he will use uh, these pictures in his teaching slides. Prof V played an instrumental role in sharpening my trauma knowledge and we learn a lot of things from him. He has taken a passion to teaching. He saw the need for the longevity of um, his um, beliefs. And Prof V saw the opportunity that the College of Surgeons can drive continuing medical education for practicing surgeons. So I think we are all very appreciative of him being very open in sharing and always being readily approachable. What I remember most of Prof V is that he can come to us like a storm right, when he is very passionate about something. He's a very passionate guy. My experience was really fantastic. Watching the way that he dealt with patients, the way that he taught the team, and it made such a deep impact on me. And he's also a man with an infectious energy. Working with Mr. V is fun. Like Jupiter, Mr. Vijayan is a bringer of jollity, always cheerful and upbeat about life. If he's not able to sleep after a case or if he wakes up early uh, at 4 a.m., he will go shopping at Mustafa. We will always remember Mr. V, his laughter. Credentials in <laughs> learning. My first contact with him, I found him very warm, very friendly. This jar full of pebbles is about our priorities in life. But I learned from Mr. Vijayan that we should also pay attention to the important and non-urgent thing that we often put away, such as our families and loved ones. He would always be very instructive and directive. How much he believed in us or how he pushed us. And share his emotions with us when he felt that uh, we could have done better. Very eager to answer questions and clear my doubts. He asked me whether I had already submitted my abstract and I sheepishly said no. So he threw me out of the OT and made me finish. But he was never personal when he spoke harshly to us. Through Mr. Vijayan, I learned how to design a system to improve patient care. He will reflect and say, let's see the case together. Then he will walk through the case with me systematically. And that has continued in the um, culture of the trauma service in Tanoxin. We are like a babushka doll. Our knowledge, experience and wisdom is a result of the influence of our parents, our teachers, our patients and our mentors. He never hesitated to review a trauma case with me at the bedside. He is a man with many interests and many talents. He has ever performed for us with his cajon and he also likes to play the drums. He loves ice cream and sweets very much and he loves chocolates as well. One of my favourite photographs of him is the one where he was standing next to his telescope. He chose to portray himself as a stargazer. While his chosen profession is that of medicine and surgery, he is very much a philosopher at heart. I was very sad that he did not manage to see my peers and my immediate seniors finish our training. Um, and I hope that somewhere out there he is watching and... I always remember the day that uh, Mrs. V actually called me to tell me that she's on the way to Chicago when Mr. V is critically ill. That moment is still very vivid in my memory. Very grateful he took me in. The legacy left behind by Prof V will stay with our trauma team for many generations. His legacy will live on in the trauma service in Tao Sing. We'll always miss Mr. V. We stand on the shoulders of giants to see further. And Prof V is indeed 
a trauma giant. Would like to take this opportunity to thank um, Mrs. Vijayan for being so kind-hearted and supportive of her husband in the years that Mr. Vijayan has had with us. I would like to thank all of you um, and I would like to share that Mr. V has been a guiding light for all of us and will continue to guide us in the ways we run our service and take care of our patients. I first knew Vijayan in 1991, and at that time uh, he was working in the Singapore Navy. I was in the Singapore Army, and we would uh, meet together uh, to coordinate uh, our individual uniform services uh, involvement in various operations and uh, exercises. Uh, I knew then that his aspiration was to be a surgeon and also to pursue trauma surgery. We would bump uh, into each other along the way in our own individual careers. And the next time uh, we would uh, meet was really uh, uh, taking exams because he took his postgraduate exams at roughly the same time as I did. Uh, subsequently, uh, he worked in Tan Tok Seng Hospital, Department of Surgery, and I worked in uh, other hospitals, including the National University Hospital, Alexander Hospital, and Kute Port Hospital in Singapore. But our paths really uh, intertwined and we uh, worked very closely together uh, when it came to planning for trauma surgery uh, causes. And uh, Mingta, uh, Vijayan and myself were part of the first uh, batch of uh, instructors for the definitive surgery for trauma course in Singapore. We attended the DSTC together, first as students, and then subsequently uh, uh, became the uh, uh, founding faculty for the DSTC courses and we would uh, uh, participate as uh, instructors uh, for each uh, course that uh, was held in Singapore. Vijayan would always uh, chair the uh, uh, DSTC. He would be the director for the uh, DSTC courses. And he was a very uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, instructor, uh, very uh, engaging. And uh, all participants uh, warmed up to him very easily within the first few minutes of, uh, of the course. He took pride uh, in uh, uh, in uh, doing his best for the individual uh, assigned uh, sessions. And uh, talking about ballistic trauma was in fact his, uh, his forte. Uh, he was particularly uh, engaging when it came to uh, the various case scenarios and discussions and would always uh, be able to elicit uh, contributions uh, and discussions from the participants. Vijayan was the life of uh, DSCC in Singapore, and to some extent, the success of the program uh, was uh, in, uh, in small part due to his uh, immense contributions behind the scene. Uh, the Department of Surgery in Tatok Singh uh, grew in stature and became a, a leading uh, trauma center because of the efforts of uh, Vijayan and his colleagues uh, there. So it was with sadness that I learned of his uh, sudden demise in the States where he was attending a work meeting and conference. And then subsequently uh, 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 when I attended his, uh, his funeral. So I continue to uh, keep fond memories of uh, Jan and I uh, uh, know that uh, his contributions to surgery and uh, particularly to the DSTC will always be appreciated here in Singapore. When I was about 11 years old, I realized that we had something in my home that my classmates and friends didn't have. We had an additional human skull. We also had a femur and a tibia. These bones were purchased by my father for study and teaching purposes. Now they were legal at the time, I'm not sure about now, but in my home, it was normal to have them lying around. You know who didn't think it was normal? My friends. One day when they came over, my father decided it would be great fun to liven things up. He turned off all the lights and walked into the living room with the skull illuminated from inside by a flashlight. We screamed, but the screams quickly dissolved into laughter when we realized it was him. And the laughter well, it quickly dissolved too into silence for a good 15 minutes when he turned the lights back on and started explaining the anatomy of the skull to a bunch of 11 year olds. 
The skull is the first of four images I have chosen to talk about my father, a person who demonstrated and showed rather than just told. I've inherited the gallows humor, and the next image represents another thing I've inherited. A year or so ago, in the middle of working almost nonstop 14 hour days, I was sitting on the sofa watching a Cold War documentary on Netflix. I realized at the point that I was doing exactly what my father did. In the middle of a punishing schedule, he found solace and enjoyment in learning about the world, enjoying movies, books, and music. Although he would binge watch a lot more than I ever did, he once binge watched the entire Star Wars trilogy in a single night and had to go to work the next morning. But the habit of simply absorbing as much knowledge about the world as you can, that's a good way to be. With curiosity about the world came idealism, the sense that things can be better than they are, that people can be better than they realize. In his life, this was linked to his personal faith and beliefs in a relationship with something higher than himself. And he did this regularly through prayer, but also through other things. Like this photo he sent us of a sunrise over Lake Michigan in Chicago. This was the last sunrise he ever saw. Against the agony that a trauma surgeon sees every day, or even against the crisis we are now living through, faith and idealism may seem like a fool's pursuit. But faith in any form, whether in a higher power, family, friends, colleagues, or knowledge, is necessary, even if it only keeps people on their feet for a few more minutes. The question is, is it enough? As you all know too well, it takes a very particular personality to thrive as a trauma surgeon, and even then the job demands a physical and mental price. So is anything I shared about my father, humor, curiosity, faith, idealism, enough for a trauma surgeon, or even for, the, for a father, husband, son, brother, teacher, or friend? Are they enough for any human being? I don't know, but I do have one more image to share with you. If you aren't familiar with a blowpipe, it's a weapon that you blow out of one end and a dart, usually poisoned, is shot out of the other end. This blowpipe was procured by my father on one of his travels and one day he was showing it to my husband who was the ideal audience. My father gave the blowpipe a try. Thankfully, these darts were not poisoned because I was standing across the room. The perfect target. The dart landed on my upper arm, it pierced my skin and stuck out at a right angle. My father's first reaction, he turned to my husband with a look of triumph and said, wow, did you see that? My husband was equally impressed. It was only after I reminded them that there was a blowpipe dart sticking out of my arm that I was offered assistance by the trauma surgeon. Maybe it's a good lesson though. I don't mean you should shoot your family with a blowpipe dart and it's not an exact science, of course, but it shows that instinct, experience and a healthy curiosity can go a long way whether it's about saving lives or giving your family a funny story to share. So again, is it enough? Humor, curiosity, books and movies, idealism, faith, a sunrise, the willingness to experiment. We can have all these things and still get it wrong sometimes, but we probably also get it right a lot. And if we are lucky like my father, it may give other people the courage to do the same. The fact that we are all here today is testament to that. I think it's a good way to live, and it's how he left the world a little better than how he found it. And I am the wife of Mr. B, as his friends and colleagues used to call him. Firstly, I would like to start by thanking the organizers, the Asian Collaboration for Trauma, Mr. Chu, his close colleague, as well as Dr. Dela Cruz, who were the ones who contacted me, and every person who is involved in the care of patients who had trauma in any way. I'm so happy that my family and I could be a part of this. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for including us in this event. Let me start with explaining how my life was um, with Vijayan as my husband in this short time that I have. That's Vijayan and me. It is during the Indian festival of Diwali. So we were wearing the traditional Indian costume and then we would usually go to the temple after that. It all began in a little town in Southern India called Tanjavur, where the two of us went to med school. And that's how we met. 
Vijayan was a fourth generation Singaporean. That means his great grandmother had come to Singapore um, in 1920s probably, but he went to India to do med school and that how, that's how we met each other. This was uh, Vijayan uh, playing the tabla and you know, having the photography, like a double photography. And it was in 1971, just before med school started. So this is what he would have looked like uh, when I first met him. He was amazing with music. He hadn't had any formal training, but he loved to play music and percussion was the biggest thing for him. I remember every time there was a peppy music going on in the TV, he would bring all his tablas and things and he would add some pots and pans from the kitchen to add to the lovely sound that he used to make. He and his brothers loved to do that. And this is him looking um, debonair, maybe trying to do Elvis Presley. And again, uh, this is probably exactly what I fell in love with. That's us in college. This is Vijayan and this is me. At that time, we didn't know that we were going to end up together because only in 1976, in the fourth year of college, we actually started to date. And this was for his birthday when his father had come to India and we took this picture. And the funny thing is, um, Vijayan's birthday is on the Indian Independence Day and my birthday is on the Singapore Independence Day. Some things just happen like that. That is him with long hair and long sideburns. This is him at the intercollegiate um, music festival where he used to play and he and his partners would practice um, the other colleagues who played guitar and other things. And I remember that um, he used to get upset with them because one of the guitarists had a girlfriend and he used to always come late for practice. So later on when in the fourth year, when Vijay and I started going out, the friend came back to tell him, now you know what it means to have a girlfriend. That is why I was late for practice. In college, he was a front bencher and uh, he would draw these beautiful diagrams of the heart and various things in the class. He would actually draw it right there while taking notes. In the exam one time, I remember he didn't write anything because those days there was no MCQ. It was all just um, essay questions. He just drew a picture and labeled it and he got better marks than me when I wrote thousands of words and it was, he had explained his knowledge even better than I had. He was also very much into scouts when he was in school. He used to go outdoors, camp, he loved survival. Even when he was working in the army in Singapore, you know, some of his colleagues used to tell me that he's a guy who likes to do the outdoor stuff. He likes to do camping. He likes to do survival, light a fire and stuff, which other people didn't like so much. He was really into stuff like that. We got married in 1978 in a traditional Indian wedding. And uh, this is Vijayan. The other love that he had, I think I was the first one, was uh, trains. He loved trains. This is in uh, North Dakota where my daughter lives. And we used to sit there and watch this in a shunting yard, the trains and the compartments and the bogies were being shunted from one engine to other. We used to sit there and watch for hours. Of course, it was more interesting for him than for me. So I would just be pacified by getting something to eat, you know, like ice cream or something. And then he would go and take these photos and watch the trains for hours at end. That is him standing between two engines, stationary, of course. This is the other thing he liked to do. Again, in North Dakota, there was this thing called a slough. It was called Kelly Slough. There's this water, a uh, big water area and birds used to come. The birds that migrated down for the south would come back in summer. And we would spend hours there just uh, sitting and watching ice. Honestly, I used to do, used to get a little bit bored, but he really, really liked it. And then he had this big camera. So in the beginning, he had uh, two lenses and one camera body. And then it became difficult to keep changing the lens on the camera body. So he decided to buy two camera bodies and two lenses. And you can guess who's the other person who was carrying the other lens and the other camera body. So we, he, he, he would decide which one he want to use and keep taking pictures. See, this is how he took pictures. It is, he was very patient when it came to taking pictures. He loved to take pictures of birds in flight. That's him. I, at this trip, I didn't go with him. And then we went to the Stonehenge we took an early morning tour in February when we could go inside the and cl close to the Stonehenge. It was freezing cold. He didn't care. He just whipped out his camera and kept taking pictures. And he did really take very nice pictures. He also loved to take pictures from the flight. And sometimes a cabin crew would come and tell him that he had to switch off the electronic items, especially landing and taking off. But uh, he would still secretly whip it out and take pictures. In fact, um, one of the things is that 
when we travel together, at least 50% of the time, there seems to be have an emergency on board. And one particular trip that we went to Amsterdam, there were three patients on that same flight. And the last patient actually needed to be defibrillated. So um, it was um, one thing that somehow seemed to happen when I was traveling with him. The other thing he really liked was astronomy. We had a telescope. Fortunately, we didn't carry the telescope for every holiday. Thank God for that. But this is the solar eclipse, which he took right from our backyard. He used to really use his telescope and sit in the you know, stand in our backyard and watch the stars and so many events that I had not any idea, no idea about. He would teach me about that and he would take pictures. This is the last trip we had together to the Grand Canyon. That's him again with a big camera. And that's the Grand Canyon and the picture of a bird flying across with the shadow on the um, water. It took him a long time to take that picture. And um, of course I was with him and we used to have fun, a lot of fun. We used to find exotic places to go to mostly. That is me and him again uh, in our house. So Vijayan was a really nice man. There were always ups and downs, every marriage has, but ultimately it's the ups that you count. And um, we had 37 grand years together. Unfortunately, it ended too, too quickly. Thank you very much for allowing me to share my experiences and my life with Vijayan.